<laughs> hey, Addy, so I'm thinking about starting a, another business of my own. I'm going to teach short people, people shorter than me, how to, uh, how to do math. I'm going to call it making the little things count. <laughs> so thank you all for tuning in today. What we're going to do is we're going to go through the map of the greater Portland area, and we're going to give you a little bit better of an idea of where you should be looking if you're relocating to this area. Stay tuned. I had to get a tissue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in again today. I'm Lucas Holt, your local realtor to Southwest Washington, as well as the greater Portland area. And again, we got Addie Net back at it again. again. If this is your first time to our channel, hit like, hit subscribe, and hit that little bell button. You know what to do. And also, you see that number and you see that email. Give us a call, give us a text, give us an email anytime, 24 seven, put us to work for you. And that way we can make what's coming up in this video more tailored to your exact needs. Yes, sir. So the, what we're gonna do today, as we said, we're gonna go yeah. through, take a look at this greater Portland area map for you. And we're just kind of gonna do a little bit of a rundown mm -hmm. of, hey, what is your situation kind of say multiple different personalities all that kind of stuff and talk about hey where we're seeing different types of people where they're settling at in the portland area now again reach out to us this is something that we do every single day when we're on zoom calls and we actually go down your personal needs and your personal wants when you're relocating to this area and we are diving into a much more detailed view of each area of portland and what we think would be suited best for you me myself i actually i relocated from san diego um i can tell you right now i moved here when i i had only been here what i think twice maybe three times right. and those were for job interviews those mm -hmm. weren't to go see the actual city themselves so when i moved here i knew nothing about the city i actually used the team that i work with who helped me kind of go through and mm -hmm. figure out a little bit more about the city and then through my experience we also expanded upon our processes to help people just like you get a better idea of what portland is actually like so hopefully when you leave and go home then you have a little bit better of an idea of exactly where you would like to purchase your house here yeah and i think a lot of the uh importance you know we put together these hotspot agenda lists right and a lot of it is like i love the term i'll steal from you is like wandering with a purpose because often google maps mm -hmm. doesn't send us the route that the locals would take essentially okay. like you think locals is served for like beach towns and hawaii no like it's also in portland in southwest washington so i always like to kick off too and tell people i'm born and raised here i've mm -hmm. owned and lived in every single quadrant and we're going to break down these quadrants in the portland area so number one thing i think i'll d jump into it is what divides portland east side and west side mm -hmm. and that is called the willamette river and that's how you pronounce it yep willamette not willamette don't worry it took me about a year to start saying willamette yeah willamette. So, <laughs> willamette willamette that's the easiest way so that's going to break east side and west side exactly so that's the number one thing to know and then we're bridgetown right so we have a ton of different bridges the north and south divider mm -hmm. is burnside bridge yep so we're renownedly known for the major protests which were way dramatic way ice, past right? that way past that yep. but that still photo of which where everyone came together as a community peacefully mm -hmm. was on what well, was on the burnside bridge and that is the bridge that divides the north and the south and the river that's over that bridge mm -hmm. is the east and the west so i think that's a great way to start exactly right exactly so from there obviously we have what our four quadrants are for you so mm -hmm. If you haven't done so yet, look at our four quadrants uh, kind of tour video that we have for you guys where we break down exactly which 
quadrant is kind of most most affiliated with what but really i think from a general overview uh easy thing to say with the greater portland area is the east side is going to be a little take take downtown out of the equation right now i'm saying the east side is going to be a little bit more i would say almost eclectic um it's going to be a little bit more artsy for you whereas the west side is going to be more suburbia it's going to be more soccer mom and families for you so there are two very different feelings going from east portland to the suburbs going west so downtown portland itself would be situated right smack dab in the middle there for us and downtown portland is its own beast i mean well and i think we need to put a pin on what downtown portland is exactly because really it's like the first 15 blocks on the east or the west side mm-hmm. of that divider so you've got the business district yep. which is like near the federal building the courthouse this is where all the major corporations are it's also mm-hmm. buds up right next to portland state university mm-hmm. that's one thing to know different from university of portland portland state there's not a lot of residential going not on at all not even a lot of um after five o'clock like retail going yep. on at all pioneer square where the, another thing like not a lot of residential going yeah. on there so if you're one of those individuals that wants that downtown life it's not going to be much different from any other major city downtown for you it's not going to have a ton of residential if you do want residential within the immediate downtown likely you're going to be ending up in around the pearl, pearl district. district the pearl district has fantastic condo <clears throat> opportunities there beautiful yep. new uh, new area of downtown itself you don't really have to worry about much homelessness or anything there i know downtown portland gets a bad rap for homelessness i always say as long as you're away from chinatown away from that old town district for you yeah. then downtown is pretty nice for you yeah and uh, like put that another mm-hmm. pin on the map is that we did that video on chinatown yep. showing like the unhoused mm-hmm. crisis which has improved dramatically and mm-hmm. i'm not going to extend yep. on that comment but the pearl district is just north of that chinatown area and that was actually my first apartment outside of school as yep. i lived right in the pearl district there's probably twice as many buildings as there are in mm-hmm. the early 2000s when i lived there but it really has a vibe to me if you've ever been to like bellevue washington up in the upper modern areas mm-hmm. of seattle but much more affordable and then also extending a little bit east into Knob Hill, Slab Town, you get a little more of a hipstery vibe yep. with that like Portland charm, but you're still downtown. You're super close to Providence Park where mm-hmm. our major league soccer team, the Timbers, play. Yep. That's a huge drawing attraction. So those are really the expansion you see. Pearl District from the northwest, kind of like uh, sixth area just outside of Union Station, all the way up to Northwest 25 fifth where you're going to see all of those shops and you'll see modern all the way up to kind of restored original Mm -hmm. portland that is truly your downtown living not the business district that a lot of people are uh, confused by exactly so let's go on to our next area for you let's talk about the north and northeast i kind of lumped right. that both into each other so when you're looking on the map there you're going to see that the willamette does a little curve once it gets north of downtown for you giving you that little north portland peninsula and that's confusing because a lot of people use no pose as like super general span from like say where you and i live near st john's right. mouth all the way to the airport but that's not but true. that's not the case yeah, yeah. so no po it's it's interesting the north portland peninsula again that's where addy and i live yeah you know 10 15 years ago it was a it was a rough area to i mean put it lightly for you super scary, but, so yeah. it it has completely turned around since then it is a very safe area you have to i mean again that's why you call us we'll let you know where the good areas are where the bad areas are kind Uh of that sort of deal for you but it is very up and coming right now the city is actually kind of deemed as the next spot they're trying to really get rolling right now they're widening streets adding sidewalks new businesses are coming in brand new starbucks all that kind of stuff so really right now what we're seeing this 
North Portland area turn into is a lot of young professionals, I like to say. So people that are situated between those later 20s and into mid 30s to late 30s, we see a lot of people moving in there at. My next door neighbor actually just moved in, is about, I think she said she's 34 years old, just got her first job as a doctor. So she right. just graduated school. A lot of individuals like that in the area. Me, myself, being 31 years old, that's where I bought because I saw a lot of people around my age group in that area for you. So a lot of yeah. young professionals, you do get some people with some younger kids and everything that are starting to buy into the area as well. Mm -hmm. um, school districts aren't going to be the greatest in Portland, but they're up and coming i should say i love that so this is an area in my opinion you know obviously i advised lucas and then my wife and i bought in this area four years ago i think it is the next quadrant that hasn't fully appreciated yep. meaning hasn't shown its potential value and the city's supporting that with their actions exactly. right so they're repaving restructuring um reinvesting in the integrity of mixed commercial use and residential it's super promising but going back to the actual map so i5 is kind of the split in my opinion of north portland and Without northeast it portland yep. so when you're looking at i5 you're going to be on the left side of that so yep. you know you're looking east of i5 and i always I tell people try to look at something that's about a half mile to a mile east of i5 because all of the residential opportunities that butt up to i5 mm -hmm. um align on a freeway and then the, the light rail yep so you're gonna see massive deals and be like oh my gosh this is incredible and then you come for your visit and if you weren't advised or toured by us you're gonna be like this place is a freaking dump but if you would keep going you'd see this totally evolve and you'd see the potential so i always tell people hey if you can find something that might be like say north greeley which we'll pin on the map all the way to st john's and the closer you want to be to the foundational pillars of nopo is university yeah. of portland the number seven nursing school in the united states and then the world headquarters for adidas adidas right the closer you can be <laughs> to those the better exactly. investment you're going to have and it serves to be a great opportunity for first-time home buyers or traditional buyers that aren't dependent on the quality of public mm -hmm. schools because you're going to get in there Two one bungalow, three two bungalow. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have mixed architecture. That's gonna be extremely, extremely. It's very. Uh, there's a lot of personality in the yeah. homes on the north and northeast side. There's a <coughs> ton of personality in the home. So again, if you're one of those people that are out there saying, "Hey, I don't want like a cookie cutter home at all. Yeah. I want some a lot of character." Then you're going to want to look at that North Portland, at that yeah. Northeast Portland, because that's where you're getting a lot of like your 1920s built and all right. that, that bungalow style, right. as Addy said. So if you're looking for a lot of character, stay on that north yeah. northeast side. So yeah. let's kind of go over into that northeast, northeast side now yeah. for us too. And so now what we're talking, what I'm going to talk about is kind of just Portland proper itself still, mm -hmm. right? So you're going to be talking about your Hawthorns, your Mississippi, your Alberta, Alameda. So those are going to be your major, major streets on that east side. It's yeah. kind of what makes Portland Portland, in my opinion. Moving yeah. from San Diego here, I kind of had the stigma like, hey, keep Portland weird. It's going right. to be like so eccentric and so artsy and everything. And very honestly, that's what the east side is for you. It's what gives this city its character, in my opinion. Downtown is downtown. In my opinion, right. it's just like any other down major downtown sure. there is. The east side of Portland is going to have all of that character that Portland is known for. It's going to have that food scene that Portland is known for. The beer and uh, spirit scene sure. that Portland is known for. All of that kind of stuff is going to be on the east side of town. Now, it is like North Portland where there's a lot of stuff to do all around. There's, It's going to be a super, I, I almost want to say a little bit faster pace of life there. Uh -huh. It's going to be for you individuals that are looking to walk out your door and have extreme walkability and being able to go out, get food, and go get drinks, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, now, keep in mind the schools aren't going to be as great just as well 
with any other area that's going to be a little bit more inner city for you. Um, but there's going to be a lot that it does offer in ways of entertainment and all of that. And yeah. keep in mind when you're looking on the map, when you're probably looking at Zillow Redfin out there, right. as you start going south from Columbia Avenue down towards Hawthorne, where you'll see Lad's Edition start, you're going to start getting a little bit more expensive and more expensive and more expensive as you start going down towards Hawthorne. Yeah. Hawthorne's going to be the most developed out of those streets that are going to be you kind of your entertainment hubs for you. Yeah, I totally agree. And like before you go down to the southeast area, which like Belmont mm -hmm. and Hawthorne is just yep. a book and the northeast. So now we're traveling from Nopo to Northeast. We're crossing over on the east side of I-5. Yep. So you had mentioned North Mississippi. I consider that run, which is super cool, super cool. You like and putting it, that in as Nopo for you. No, I yeah. think that's Northeast. <laughs> Technically, okay. to me, that's Northeast. So if you're looking in that area, you're like super condensed, single family mm -hmm. living, and then Alberta Arts District. The, both of those, when you think Portland, like murals and paintings mm -hmm. and lots of different restaurants and mix shops and most people might walk or ride a bike or a scooter to things that is your area mm -hmm. and i love that you brought up too north columbia which stretches all the way nopo to northeast mm -hmm. the closer you get to that area which is a highway mm -hmm the rougher it's going to look. Yep. I mean, it is, there's trains, it's a higher speed limit. That's why when you see a home that's like abnormally cheaper than everything else, it's because it's probably right up to that highway. So just be super mindful on that. And we help you on these pockets and through streets and exactly. explaining that. So again, give us a call when you're yeah. taking a look at that area. Cause then there is another area too called Gresham that's out on East there. Yeah. And so if you're starting to look in Gresham again, like I said, just give us a call and let's yeah. have that intelligent conversation conversation about hey what each area entails we can dive a little bit deeper into it there totally. so from there i think that that those three areas downtown north portland as northeast. well as that east side northeast for you that's really going to encapsulate where we would say young professionals right. are really yeah. going to be situated that's where those people again that want a ton of activities those are your three different areas to start looking at. Now let's take a look at some other areas. So I want to just keep on going around. Let's go clockwise around this and let's go down to the Southeast side. Okay. Yeah, so, Belmont. yep. So Southeast of there. So start talking about your lads edition and let's start going further South than that. Now we're also going to be talking about your Milwaukee. You're going to talk about happy Valley down there. Oregon City, I would even lump into there for oh, wow. you. Okay. So we're going out into the burbs at this point, right? So once we start going down south there, again, we're going to be talking about more suburbia feeling, a little bit more soccer mom. When you're talking about your Oregon City, you're going to be seeing a little bit older construction for you. It is more developed there. But then when you're talking about Happy Valley, Happy Valley is kind of a little bit of an up and coming city for you. Mm -hmm. You're actually going to be seeing quite a bit of new developments in Happy Valley right now. So it's definitely a much different feeling. Milwaukee and Oregon City are going to be more of kind of a little bit older construction, a little bit more developed already. And Happy Valley is going to be kind of that next up and coming one on that side of town there. Yeah. And let's kind of re-zoom in on the inner southeast before mm -hmm. expanding out to those burbs mm -hmm. so first and foremost and you're looking at southeast yep. your trigger points are hawthorne and belmont mm -hmm. so you're going to get your salt and straw your quarter world all your like if you haven't been to salt and straw yet you need to go super That's good sure. <laughs> mount Tabor is a big one when you're looking at listings on a map or you're working with us like i'm always going to advise like mount Tabor, which isn't a mountain it's a hill i think the elevation is like 450 feet it's an old volcano That's it's right it used to be that's why it's called a mount all i know is it's home of the adult soapbox derby every summer which is super entertaining but you're going to want to try to be on the inner part of mount Tabor on the inside of yep. that uh, a street i would avoid too is uh southeast powell that's mm -hmm. at a very quick through street yep um nothing that you're going to live right off of cleveland high school is right there and the city's actually working on improving some speed limits and zoning for schools to slow down that traffic but often if you're like oh addy said on the inside of Tabor and you found something that's a crazy deal 
it's because it's off of something like PAL. So we're going to look mm -hmm. out for that. Um, noteworthy other spots just on the inner uh, southeast spot, Selwood. Super cool little area. It's definitely more it. expensive, but yep. it's safe. It's got that whole like walk and talk vibe, strollers, mixed people. It's got a little amusement park there. Um, has Oaks a park. roller derby. Oh, yeah. If and you're it actually in filmed <laughs> part of the movie, Throwback Free Willy. Yeah, look was at filmed that. At Oaks park. Right, fun little <laughs> movie drop for you. But one thing on the southeast area, you might look at these like, oh, none of these are in my budget, and you're going to land in a, in a neighborhood called Lens. Now, Lens locally isn't known as the safest area. It's actually referred to as Felony Flats, unfortunately. So we're going to redirect you out of that area mm -hmm. um, just for safety concerns. That's my number one takeaway right mm -hmm. there. Going suburbs, though, yes, to your point, Happy Valley. Man, 20 years ago, it was just a rolling hill. Mm -hmm. It was nothing. Mm -hmm. So now you're seeing a lot of mixed brand new builds in the last 10 to 20 years at starting points of 600 all the way up to 1.2 million in some scenarios. And the school districts tied there are incredible. You got oh, Clackamas yeah. High School, the original high school, plus it's new one. Oregon City is well developed. And that's putting you super conveniently located to the airport, the freeway, mm -hmm. all your Costco, Clackamas Town Center. So someone that might be like, oh, we, we don't care about this video because we need to be in good school districts. Don't forget, you know, Happy Valley, Clackamas, Oregon City can be right up next to all these great things and you get the good schools and big house. That's exactly it. So I think lastly, what we'll do now is we'll go on to the west side of town. Right. So I'm I, at risk of sounding too rushed on this video. Sure. I really think that a lot of the west side is a good way just to lump the rest of these areas in for you. The reasoning being is that I see the typical you know, the, the person looking on the West side is going to have a much different kind of personality when, than what the people that were looking on the North or the Northeast side. Typically the people looking on the West side are going to be more so, Hey, we have the kids, we stay in more. It's not really moving to somewhere because we want to have, you know, all of our food and restaurants right outside our door and go walk somewhere every single night. It's going to be again, West side, little bit more of what we kind of deem the soccer mom territory for you, right? So Heather Listy, our teammate, that's what she deems it over there. So when we're talking about the West side, I'm going to be talking about your Beaverton, your Hillsboro, talk about lump that into Sherwood, Tiger, Tualatin. Yeah. It's very similar feeling there. But again, each city does have a slightly different feel to it. Beaverton being the closest to downtown, it is really nice having that proximity closer to it. Absolutely. But it's really going to be suburbs for you. Yeah. And I think that's going to be the biggest thing when you're looking on your maps, when you're starting to figure out exactly the feeling of the area. You're going to notice when you're here the first time, the west side has a much different vibe and a much different feeling to it than what any of the east side has. So that's... Yeah. yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. I mean, looking at the east side, obviously you've got what you said, Beaverton, Hillsborough, mm -hmm. which stretches on 26. So it's it's good to know that 26 is actually the direct artery into downtown Portland, yep. but it tunnels in. So it's a three lane, which can get super congested. But without going in the top traffic areas, you're looking 25 to 35 minutes from downtown all the way out to Hillsboro, mm -hmm. which that is a huge win for a lot of people that are relocating from higher traffic states like Austin, Dallas, Houston, Texas, all of California across the right. board <laughs> um, is an improvement there. And then it also has a max line. So people that like, like we just had this conversation yesterday where it's like, oh, I want to be out on the burbs. I'm also, you know, of Hispanic um, descent, and then I also want to be able to have access to events downtown. Well, South Hillsboro serves to be really great with the architecture you want, mm -hmm. um, the community that you want to be within, but then you want to be able to access public transportation, the light rail, in 20 to 30 minutes. That's a good tie-up. Now, Tiger Tualatin, kind of a south-south-west suburbs, Super competitive schools and um, oh, yeah. not only testing, but sports. You're also butted up right against I-5. So if you're dependent on that yep. I-5 corridor for your job, very convenient there. My last note is Sherwood 
is really a boil over of Intel and Nike employment and mm-hmm. all the opportunities and economical, you know, advancements because of those two big corporations. Yep. Sure, what twenty years ago was pumpkin field patches, blueberries, strawberries, and corn. I was actually touring one client just the other day um, who was originally from Portland, yeah. moved to San Diego actually, and then is moving back. They're now. like, what has happened? And it was funny. She, we were actually under contract for a house right now in in that area yeah. and she looks at me and goes the greatest thing about this is i remember exactly the blueberry field that was here <laughs> you picked him so, as a kid right <laughs> but it's 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 super sought after like mm-hmm. sherwood you go look at that high school it looks like a college it oh, looks yeah. like a private college it's beautiful beautiful homes and all of that's because of the economical growth and yep. the income that that brings so that west side is very family oriented um it's and i would say too a lot of people make those choices outside of schools but really your commute for work yep and the type of work you're in most tech people are going to want to the west side on the west side because that's deemed as that silicon forest and they want to be networking and a part of that community Mm -hmm. even if you are remote we get software engineers all the time i'm remote work oh yeah but they still want to be physically living in the community because there's opportunities and there's like-mindedness exactly so if you want to go into more detail than this with us which is pretty we we could talk (laughs) all day about this for you this is literally what we do every single week with people on zoom calls and we actually take your personal preferences and your personal needs and we will actually make it a more uh a more in-depth view of exactly where we think that would fit you the best so that when you do get here my goal is to always create you what i call a hot spot list and as addy said it's to get you wandering with a purpose and so this i hope is kind of helping you navigate a little bit of what you're seeing on maps what you're seeing maybe on zillow or redfin right now and then give us a call and then from here when you get into town i'll get you that hot spot list you can take what we just talked about right now take the addresses that i give you and then start driving around certain areas and really once you leave here with us you will have a great idea of what portland entails for you yeah and set that up we love it when you call and reach and schedule with us and i mean you know it's a wide bookshelf of different scenarios some right. people are like oh i'm six months out 12 months out i have a trip plan i'm thinking about a trip plan i'm comparing different states if you want to dive in and shoot uh, screen share on the map we'll go in oh, deep yeah. as you want to go but you got to reach out to us we absolutely love it this is what we focus on as we like said every single day is helping people from all across america come to the pacific yep. North. let's be honest a lot of you out here probably think that relocation sucks let us help you make it suck a little bit less yeah we right. want to reduce the stress. <laughs> reduce the stress through experience and education. Yep. So, all right, everybody. Thank you again for tuning in. Again, I'm Lucas Holt, your local realtor, and we got Addy Nat over here again. So, again, you see that number, you see that email, you know how to get a hold of us. Email, text us, call us anytime, 24 7. And don't forget to hit that like or s- and subscribe button. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a great one.